right. So for the offering this morning, um, we are going to talk a little about letting go and entering and the freedom that is in that. Um, so there is in Mark 10, um, there's this rich man that comes to Jesus and he asks him, what must I do to have eternal life, to experience eternal life? Um, so that is the life he understood having all of those things um, that he had and he was extremely rich, but he understood that um, there is a level of abundance that Jesus came for. He said that I came that they may have life and that they may have life in abundance and that there's a level of abundance that he wasn't accessing. And of course, Jesus in that, um, in that instance told him that he has to go and he has to give away everything that he has. Um, and that made him very sad. Now, of course, it wasn't the heart of Jesus that he loses everything that he's got. Um, and so I want to zoom in on what, what happens afterwards. So um, after that whole tale there in Mark 10, 23, Jesus looked around and he said to his disciples, with what difficulty will those who possess wealth and keep on holding it enter the kingdom of God? So, and th that, was the, that was the desire in this young man's heart when he, when he got, came there. He says, I want to enter the kingdom of God. And, um, and so what Jesus was doing there um, it's, a, it's, a little, it's a little perplexing, even if you look at the, the disciples' um, reaction to this, they're perplexed. And so it necessitates that Jesus has to repeat himself. But the emphasis here is not on possessing wealth, but it's on possessing wealth and keeping on holding it. It's the problem with having a closed, closed hand. A closed hand can't receive. And so um, God wants us to live in abundance. God wants us to access um, all that he paid for. But the problem is the moment that we start clinging to that, we close our hearts to the kingdom of God. We close our hearts to the access that we have into the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus said the following in Matthew 5, 3, when he, um, when he uh, took us through the Beatitudes, he said, blessed and with blessed, the Amplified Bible amplifies it in a way that you are happy, in a way that you can be envied and you're spiritually prosperous. Um, so you've got life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor. You've got satisfaction in God's salvation at the complete package, regardless of outward conditions, regardless of outward circumstances. So it's a, it's a particularly desirable state of being um, that we're in. So that desired state, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. And then it's amplified in the, the idea of being humble and who rate themselves as insignificant, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, that's the idea here, is we want to enter the kingdom of heaven. Um, now, one of the translations, this is a good news translation, uh, puts it uh, like this. Happy are those who know that they are spiritually poor. Because by far the most of the translation says, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. So what does it mean to be pure, poor in spirit? Um, so it means that even in my spirit, in my being, in my innermost being, I, I understand that I have nothing if God doesn't provide it. Right. I like the way that the New Living Translation um, puts it. It says, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need of Him. So that, that's a state that you can be in regardless of how much you have or do not have. The thing is just the more we have, the less it, it tends to be the state that we're, the less it tends to be our mindset. And now the fact of the matter is if you're sitting in a chair here at this point in time in weather like this, in, in a place like this, then we're rich. Um, by any standard in South Africa, you are rich sitting in the chair that you are sitting in. And the problem with that is perhaps we forget that we, that we need him. So being poor in spirit is a, is a state of understanding that I depend on God for everything. And, and that's the problem with, with wealth sometimes. So the disciples were amazed and bewildered and perplexed at his words, as we could, could have been, and I should have put this verse up there, but in any case. So Jesus said to them again, so he expanded on this because he knew that they would react pretty much in the way that we react. Immediately we're saying, okay, but that, does that mean that I should not have anything? I mean, should I surrender all worldly possessions? No, that's not the heart of what he's saying here. But he said to them again, children, 
how hard it is for those who trust, in other words, place their confidence and their sense of safety in riches to enter the kingdom of God. And therein lies the rub. So, ultimately, the moment that possessions, that riches, that wealth, the, the moment that our resources um, become that place where we start placing our trust, be, the moment that it becomes that place where it, that brings our sense of safety or our sense of security, then it's, it's, it's starting to become a dangerous territory. Because then what happens is instead of understanding that I'm reliant on Him for everything, then I start relying on the stuff and uh, invariably... Uh, there's, a, there's a verse in Pro, uh, Proverbs that says that riches, um, they grow wings and they fly away. <laughs> um, so that's why Jesus then said it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And of course, we've got this tightrope idea of a camel um, threading the, the, its way through a needle. I thought that was a particularly interesting picture, but reality is something more like this. Sometimes, holding on does more damage than letting go. And in finances, that is often particularly true. Sometimes, the thing is, if we can't, um, if we, God is a, is a generous God that keeps on giving, and if we can't um, come to a point where we're reflecting that generosity, um, reflecting that part of His image, then um, the, the increase is impossible. Um, we, have to, we have to let go. And, uh, and this, in times where, where budgets are stretched and where economic uh, conditions are, are interesting, well, certainly more interesting than I've ever had in my life, um, it's easy to want to hold on. And uh, I don't know if you've been trying to hold on, but if you've tried to hold on, then you'll see it, it's painful. Um, so the way that we conquer this is to open up and to let go um, so that we are reminded in our spirits that God is the one who is um, providing for us and, uh, and we live from there. So, um, so they were shocked and exceedingly astonished and then they said to, to him and to one another, then who can be saved? And therein Jesus glanced around at them and he said, with men it is impossible, but not with God. And I want to speak this over you today. Whatever seems impossible in your finances, whatever seems impossible in your, sh in your schedules, whatever seems impossible, whatever seems impossible even in your heart. Because some, some of the stuff that we've been walking around with, we've been walking around with for a while. And even that, it's, it's difficult to hang on. Um, it's more painful to hang on to, than to let go. And even in those things, we should let go. For all things are possible with God. So I speak it over you, I pray it over you today, um, that whatever it is that you are facing, um, understand that you've got access to the kingdom of heaven and let it go so that you can see the flow.